Live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering Grace Hopper's Celebration of Women in Computing. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media. Welcome to day one of the Grace Hopper Conference here in Orlando, Florida. Um, welcome back to theCUBE, I should say. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Jeff Frick. So we have just seen some, some really great keynote addresses. We had Fei-Fei Li from Stanford University, Melinda Gates, obviously the co-founder of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. We also had Diane Green, the founder of VMware. Right. Jeff, what are, what are your first impressions? You know, I love coming to the show. It's great, great to be working with you again, Rebecca. You know, I thought the keynotes were really good. I've seen Diane Green speak a lot, and she's a super smart lady, super qualified, changed the world of VMware. She's not always the greatest public speaker, but she was so comfortable up there. She so felt in her element. It was actually the best I'd ever seen. And for me, you know, I'm not a woman, but I'm a dad of, a, of two daughters. It was really fun to hear the lessons that, were, that, that some of these ladies learned from their father that they took forward. So I was really happy, I'm feeling the pressure, I make sure I do, <laughs> exactly. do a good job make with my sure daughter. Make sure those formative experiences yes, are yes, the yes. right but, ones, yes. But you know, it's, it's just interesting though how people's early foundation you know, sets the stage for where they go. I thought um, Dr. Sue Black, who talked about the morning she woke up and her husband threatened to kill her. Yeah. So she just got out of the house with her two kids and started her journey then. You know, not in her teens, not in her 20s, not in college, obviously well after that, to get into computer science and, and to start her tech journey and become what she's done now, and now she's saving the estate where the code breakers were in World War II, so phenomenal story. Melinda Gates, I've never seen her speak. Um, and then Megan Smith, right? Always just a ton of energy. Yes. You know, before she was the CTO for the United States, that was with the Obama administration. I don't think she hung around as part of the Trump administration. Yeah. So she's got, you know, she brings such energy and now kind of released from the shackles of her public service and her own thing. You know, great to see her up there. It's just a terrific event. The energy that comes from, I think a third of the people here are young women. Right. Really young, either still in college or just out of college really makes for an atmosphere that I think is unique in all the tech shows that we cover. I completely agree. I think the energy really is what sets the Grace Hopper women, celebration of women in computing apart from all the other conferences. I mean, first of all, there's just many more women who come to this. Um, the, the age, as you noted, it's a lot, it's a lot lower than, than your typical tech conference. But I also just think what is so exciting about this conference is that it is this incredible mix of uh, positivity, Let, let's get more women in here, let's, let's figure out ways to get more women interested in computer science and, and really working on their journey as tech leaders. But also really understanding what we're up against in this industry, understanding the, the programmer culture, the, the biases that, that are that are really creating barriers for women to get ahead and even actually to even enter into the industry itself. Um, but then also, there's the tech itself. And so we have these women who are talking about these cool products that they're making and, and different w pathways into artificial intelligence and machine learning and what they're doing. So it's a really incredible conference that has a lot of different layers to it. You know, it's interesting, Dr. Fei-Fei Li was up talking a lot about um, artificial intelligence and, and the programming that goes into artificial intelligence and kind of the classic Google story where you use crowdsourcing and run a bunch of photographs through an algorithm to teach it. But she made a really interesting point and there's you know, all this discussion about, our, is, you know, is, it the dark, is it the dark feature of AI where they take over the world and kill us all or is it a positive <laughs> feature where it frees us up to do more important things or more enlightened things? And, and she really made a good point that it's, you know, how do you write the algorithms? You know, how are we training the computers to do what we do? And you know, women bring a different perspective. Diversity brings a different perspective. And to bake that into the algorithms up front is so, so important to shape the way the AI shapes our, the evolution of our world. So I found that to be a really, uh, really interesting point that she brought up that I don't think is talked about enough. People have to write the algorithms. People have to write this, the stuff that trains the machines. 
So it's really important to have broad perspective. I, I, you're absolutely right, and I think she actually, she made the point even, even broader than that in the sense of is if AI is going to shape our life and our economy going forward. Which it will, which right? it will, not a doubt. Then the fact that there are so few women in, in technology, this is a crisis. Because, because we, if, we, if, we, if, if the people who are the end users and who are going to either benefit or, or be disadvantaged by AI are, aren't, aren't showing up and aren't, aren't helping create it, then yes, it is a crisis. Right, and I think the other point that came up was to bake more computer science into other fields. Yes. You know, whether it's biology, mm -hmm. whether it's Whatever, law, education. Law, education, mm -hmm. right? The application of AI, the application of computer science in all those fields is much more powerful than just computing for the sake of yes. computing. And yes. I think that's another way, hopefully, to keep more women engaged, because a big part of the issue, right, is not only the pipeline at the lead, but there's a lot of, lot of droppage as they go through the process. So how do you keep more of them involved? Obviously, if you open it up across a broader set of uh, academic disciplines, the, but by rule, you should get more retention. The other thing that's interesting here, Rebecca, this is our fourth year the Cube's been at, at Grace Hopper since way back in, in, in Phoenix in 2014, ironically, when, when there was also a big Microsoft moment at that show that we won't delve back into. But it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a time of change. We have Brenda Darden-Wilkerson, the brand new president of the Anita Borg organization. Telly Whitney's stepping down, she's passing the baton. We'll have them both on. So again, Telly's done a great job. Look what she's created yeah. and the team but always fun to have fresh blood, always fun to bring in kind of new energy, new point of view, and I'm really excited to meet Brenda. She's done some amazing things in the Chicago public school system, and if you've ever worked in a public school district, not a really easy place to innovate and bring change. Right, no, of course. We've, yes, our lineup of guests is incredible this week. Um, we've got Slayer Clatterbuck, who is obviously a CUBE alum. Right, um, right. We have a woman who's the founder of Roar, which is a, uh, a self-defense wearable technology. So it's, it's, we're going to be looking at a broad array of the women technologists who are leading change in the industry, but then also leading it from a rec recruitment and retention. So it should be a great three days, looking forward to it. it I am as well. Excellent. Okay, so please keep joining us. Keep keep your uh, your channel tuned in here to the Cube's coverage of the Grace Hopper Conference here in Orlando, Florida. I'm your host Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host Jeff Frick. We will see you back here shortly. Shh.